So configuring the bootloader, I'm going to be using grub, so we need to install it. So there's a few extra tools get pulled in with that one. I'll note for UFI users running the above command will output the enabled grub platforms value before emerging. When using UFI cable systems, users will need to ensure grub platforms is enabled. If that is not the case for the setup, grub platforms EFI64 needs to be added to the portage make file before emerging grub so that the package will be built with EFI functionality. So I'm going to stop that mid compile and do that so if I rerun you'll see that the oh it has actually already set it by the looks of it grub platforms it's automatically set now that didn't used to be set but I shall put this in anyway um, let's edit this and put this in manually. Let's put it somewhere down here. In fact, I'm going to put it on the top so it's obvious. So let's put all this text here into here and rerun that. Okay, looks like it's disabled the PC by doing that. Yeah, PC's been disabled. Uh, maybe that's the 32 bit um, BIOS boots and that might have interfered then, so it's probably a good thing we did that. So let's carry on with the build. Okay, that's done. So some information about installing something called OS Prober, which allows you to um, configure Grub to search for other operating systems that might be on the machine. So this is only going to be the only one on here, so I don't need that. Uh, I've got some news items there. Let's deselect news list, and it's about Grub update, updates. So 
read 15. And it's basically saying when Grub's updated that the um, install files should be installed each time, which is what we're about to do, um, just so there's no mismatch with the files. And some other f information in there as well. So for DOS legacy systems, it's just that simple command. For UEFI, it's slightly different. And this is a command you need to run each time Grub's updated to ensure all its files are up bang up to date and that's worked no errors there um, something there about secure boot but there's some possible technical issues there with the looks of it so it's probably not advisable to use secure boot just yet at least not with grub Debugging with Grub, some information there. So configuring Grub. So we've got the well, it's a secondary bootloader as it's been mentioned in the book. The primary bootloader is the BIOS UEFI, um, and that would load Windows, for example, or Linux. The secondary bootloader is Grub because it provides another menuing system to boot other operating systems. So it's just another layer really, but it's something that's totally under our control. Um, but we haven't told it what operating systems there are. We've installed the kernel, we've installed the modules, we've installed the secondary bootloader, but that bootloader's got no way of knowing that we've got a kernel for it. So this next command, make config, creates a configuration file that Grub will actually use to find out about what boot options we want to have at boot time. So by running this, it looks and identifies what kernels there are and it creates a, a little menu for us at boot time. And you'll see there's two versions of the kernel because I rebuilt it, it renames the current one to .old so the most recent one with those extra changes in is this one here and it puts that at the top uh, and makes that as the default boot. Alternative bootloader Lilo. Um, EFI stub. Syslinux as well, systemd boot. And again, secure boot, probably with systemd. And that looks like that should be it. So we've got just about everything installed. We should be able to boot into the system now. So I'm going to do, well, let's exit this window here first of all. Exit that. Run this command to, let's do CD first, to unmount all the file systems we had mounted. Or is that listing them maybe? I'm not sure what that L parameter does. That will unmount everything under Mount Gen 2. And in theory, if we reboot now, we should be able to get into our new system. So let's just have a look at finalizing. There's a few things here to do, which we can do once the system's up. So we're just at the end of the chapter. So yeah, I'll just do reboot. It should shut this down. It's a live CD environment, so it doesn't really matter that we're just shutting down a bit messily. When it comes up, I'll pull out the USB 